Okay, here we go with experiment seven. I've got a test tube rack. I've got a test tube of magnesium, strontium, I'm sorry, magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium. I'm gonna test each of those with the first of the anions, the chromate ion. So here is magnesium nitrate, a little bit of potassium chromate, and what you see is what you see. Your concern is, is there a precipitate forming or any unusual color change? And one way you can tell, and I'll just hold up this. Yeah. If you can read the letters through the solution, then you know there's no precipitate in there. That's called the Tyndall test. So what we saw was that chromate and uh, magnesium did nothing. Here's calcium with chromate. Calcium and chromate, do they form a precipitate or not? Here's strontium. What does strontium do with chromate? Well, not much. Okay, there's strontium with chromate. And finally, barium with chromate. Oh. Clearly, or it's not clear, uh, obviously a precipitate formed. And since well, all we have in there are barium ions, nitrate ions, potassium ions and chromate ions, you know that the only possible combination for that precipitate will be barium with chromate because potassium and nitrate never form precipitates. Okay, there's the chromate test. I'm gonna get a set of fresh test tubes. Once again, I have magnesium. That's probably if I, better if I show the whole thing. Magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. I'm going to test each of these with the oxalate ion from ammonium oxalate. So here is magnesium with oxalate. Here is calcium with oxalate. Okay, so you want to write down what you're seeing. This would be strontium with oxalate. Strontium with oxalate. And finally, barium with oxalate. And there you have it. That's the test with oxalate. I'm bringing over a fresh set. And we're gonna test these with sulfate. Once again, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium. Calcium or magnesium with sulfate. Calcium with sulfate. If you go online, you're going to find that they tell you that calcium sulfate isn't very soluble, yet you don't see much forming here. I'm going to let it sit a minute, but just to confirm, that was calcium with sulfate. Here's strontium with sulfate. Okay, now look at that. It didn't form right away, but clearly something's going on in there. 
Once again, here's our calcium. Nothing slowly forming there. Finally, barium with sulfate. Oh. One of the things you're seeing is that barium seems to react with lots of stuff. That's typical of heavy cations, and barium's well down toward the bottom of the table. Okay, we have one anion left to test, and that's hydroxide. So magnesium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, all with hydroxide. Here is magnesium with hydroxide. Here is calcium with hydroxide. Okay. How about strontium with hydroxide? Okay. And finally, barium with hydroxide. Okay, so you've seen magnesium, calcium, strontium, and barium as they react with chromate anion, oxalate anion, sulfate, and hydroxide. That's the basic part of the experiment. I'm gonna shut things off for a couple of minutes and set up for our unknowns, of which we're gonna do three. I will tell you now that they are number seven, number four, and number five. I'll demonstrate what happens with each of those with chromate, oxalate, sulfate, and hydroxide because let's take number four it's the first one this is either magnesium or calcium or strontium or barium based on how it reacts to the anions it'll be up to you to decide which of those four magnesium calcium strontium barium this is okay so we're going to stop for a minute we're going to go with the unknowns now the um, thing I told you in the first, first part was that I was going to do three unknowns. I'm only going to do two. I'm going to do number five and number seven. So here's number five. Understand that it's magnesium or it's calcium or it's strontium or it's barium. And based on how it reacts to the four anions, chromate, oxalate, sulfate, and hydroxide, you're to decide which one of those group two cations number five is. So here it is with chromate. That's number five with chromate. Here's number five with oxalate. Okay. Here's number five with sulfate. Okay, you saw something like this before. That sort of slow formation. Should be a pretty good clue. And finally, here's number five with hydroxide. Okay, so you've seen unknown number five with chromate, oxalate, sulfate, and hydroxide. Now let's try unknown number seven, which I've already prepped here. Unknown number seven, 
is one of the four cations. Could be the same one. Could be a different one. Let's see what happens with number seven and chromate. How about number seven and oxalate? Okay. Number seven and sulfate. And finally, number seven and hydroxide. Okay. You've seen all the tests so far. I'm going to uh, turn the camera off again and show you a little bit of the report sheet and kind of what I'm looking for. So let me turn the camera off. Let's take a look at the report sheet. Remember when I put potassium chromate in barium, uh, magnesium nitrate, nothing happened. Remember though that if I put potassium chromate in barium nitrate, we got a yellow, maybe a whitish yellow precipitate. So in these squares, all you're doing is writing down what you see happen. You didn't see anything here. You did see a yellow precipitate here. I've got the same thing set up for unknown number five and again for unknown number seven. Tell me what happens when you put chromate with number five and oxalate with number five and sulfate with number five and so on. Then down here <clears throat> in analysis and conclusions, you're supposed to put no reaction, as it says right there, if there's no reaction. Isn't that clever? Magnesium nitrate, potassium chromate had no reaction, nothing new was formed, so I simply wrote NR. If you want to go all out and write no reaction, or I didn't see anything happen, go ahead, but all you really need is NR. On the other hand, for this yellow precipitate that we got with barium and potassium chromate, now we did get a yellow precipitate. That's what the solid is here for. I know it's barium and chromate making the precipitate because I know that potassium never forms precipitates and neither does nitrate. So you're going to fill in all the rest of these. These are all the other combinations that we did. Notice that I did all the magnesium, then all the calcium, then all the strontium. So just kind of keep track of it that way. And let's go on to the other page. and raise it up a little bit so you can see what's going on. It says, for only those combinations in which a precipitate formed. Okay, well, I only put two combinations on the other side, so only one of them made a precipitate. There it is. Barium ion combines with chromate ion to make barium chromate. I'm not going to write anything in here for the magnesium nitrate and potassium chromate because there was no precipitate. Coming down here for the unknowns, here's unknown number five. You're going to tell me if it's magnesium, calcium, strontium, or barium, and how you know. Either tell me something you did see that tells you definitely that's what it is, or something you didn't see that tells you that's definitely what it can't be. Uh, sometimes you're gonna need more than one piece of evidence, sometimes one will do it. It just depends on what these two unknowns are. But I'm gonna put more import, important uh, point value on the evidence than on getting it right. Uh, you've got a one, three, one in four chance of getting each of these right. In fact, I make it better than that because I'll tell you they're not the same. Um, so you've got a pretty good chance of getting a good score, but the key is to know how to explain it. That's what, um, what I'm looking for. You've seen all the evidence, so I'm gonna shut it off and it's up to you the rest of the way.